Okay, so now let's take the same problem. We're gonna tweak it slightly. So this is that problem. How do we deal with this kind of a question when it's asking us to find accelerations and velocities and position? So I know it's asking me for A, and I know it's asking me for a V, and it's asking me for an X. And this is dV over dt. This is dx over dt. So just remember that as we go through this. So now that we have to set up a Lagrangian, the first thing we have to do is figure out what is the coordinates that we need? What is the degree of freedom in our situation? So in this case, let me choose this as my coordinate. And since I'm dealing with Lagrange, Lagrange are basically energies. So I'm not very concerned about um, the directions per se, right? There's no tensions in this case. What do we have to do in order to set up this question? Well, first of all, we have to know that this is theta. If this is theta, what would this angle be? Is this angle theta? That's what geometry tells us, right? If this distance is the maximum distance this can move, I, can I call it x? And if the total length of my string is L, will this distance be L minus X? I'm going to ignore for now. So imagine the pulley is very tiny. So there's hardly any rope that goes over the pulley for now. Suppose I call this mass one and I call this mass two then the biggest problem is for me to write the Lagrange. So a Lagrangian was defined as, how many kinetic energies will I need? One for each mass, one half mx1 dot squared plus one half m2x2 dot squared. How many potential energies will I need? One for mass one and one for mass two. Are the velocities the same for both masses? Yes. Otherwise the system wouldn't work. So then may I write one half M1 plus M2 X dot squared. Now comes to potential energy. Now this is tricky. What am I looking for? I am looking for this H because my potential energy, remember how, how this pendulum moved up and we were looking for this H, how much the center of mass moved up. Do you remember that? In this case, we are looking for how much the center of mass moved up. Is this corresponding to that H that I've written over here? And then can I write this as X sine of theta. So this means I can write this as, so that means I can write my V according to my mass one as minus M1 GH or minus M1 GX sine theta. And can I write my MV2 as minus M2 GL minus X? Why am I saying that? As height goes larger, does the potential become smaller? Which when I plug it into here becomes M1GX sine theta plus M2GL minus X. Remember, it's always the center of mass that moves up. Yes, sir? Can you explain the L minus X? Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm going to do a highlighter. What is the total length? L. If this distance is X, what is this distance left? L minus X. So H will always change the length. Absolutely. H changes with the change in length. 
And that is why the potential changes as H, but we don't know what H is, but we definitely, we can measure L. So everything has to be in terms of L's and signs, right? Yes. Um, why did we start off with X1, X.1 and X.2? Then... Oh, because we needed two masses, right? Right, but why does it then go to just regular X dot squared? Okay, what are the velocities for each of these masses? Are they, they the are same? The same. Yep. Right, that's why I just went to the X because there's only technically one degree of freedom in this problem, Understood. right? It, the, both masses cannot do anything separately. Okay, so this is our Lagrangian, right? So then the question is asking us, what is the acceleration? With friction and without friction. How do we do that problem? For the frictionless case. Math physics people, the Euler-Lagrange equation. For the frictionless case, what will that look like? Are we gonna use equation one or two? Which looked like what? And what, what is our generalized coordinate? In this case, x dot. And then for the friction the case, it will be d over dt partial L over partial x dot minus partial L over partial x equals the frictional force. This is the only difference between the two. Well, not the only one because now it's gonna be different. What is the formula for friction? Mu times N. And what is N in, if mg points downwards, mg, this is again theta mg cosine theta. So then this will become mu m one g cosine theta. So d over dt of um, what's this answer? Partial l over partial x dot. M one plus two x one. There we go. Minus partial l over partial x. Oh, yeah. X double dot equals M1G sine theta minus M2G, which means my acceleration is M1G sine theta minus M2G divided by M1 plus M2. And this is nothing other than acceleration. So how do I find velocities now? So acceleration is just dv over dt, which is the whole thing. And then just take the integral. It's like literally one step. So then what would this one look like? d over dt of m1 plus m2 x dot again, right? Minus <coughs> m1g sine theta plus m2g equals minus mu m1g cosine theta. And then the answer that I get that you guys have to reconfirm is m1g sine theta minus mu cosine theta minus m2g divided by m1 plus m2. And again, you have to do the A, which is dv over dt, and then one more step down, which will be V equals DX over DT. And V equals DX over DT. That will help you find the velocity. This will give you velocity, and this will give you position and a smiley face. Yes.